Thank you, um, Senator Laura. And uh, the vote on the Senate side is 3-1. The vote on the Assembly side is 3-1. We will now go to the another, not in conference, the Department of Fish and Wildlife. It's a statewide oil pollution program, marine and inland. It is a compromise, a conference compromise. So go ahead, uh, Ms. Bosler. Um, yes, yeah, so this uh, was a, a, a proposal that uh, we had in our January budget um, to address um, uh, prevention and safety programs um, related to the um, transportation of oil in the state. Um, and uh, the, both the Assembly and Senate had modified our trailer bill language, and the compromise here is actually to go back to the original um, um, governor's proposal, which um, does have a cap of 6.5 cents per barrel, uh, on an ongoing basis for um, all oil, um, crude oil that's entering California refineries. Um, so uh, this is different from what the Assembly and the Senate um, acted on, which would have allowed um, uh, uh, the uh, fee to be increased um, uh, through administrative mechanisms. Um, and this would actually put the cap um, on the fee in state statute. All right. Um, great. Uh, Assembly Member Bloom has moved the item. Senator Hancock, yeah, do you I, have a comment? Yeah, I just wonder um, what the rationale was for the cap when we're uh, just beginning to be aware of a lot of the risks that we're taking uh, with the trains and the oil coming in. And um, I know that in other departments, like in D and as we found out last year, in terms of oil refineries, the Department of Industrial Relations has the ability to raise fees to ensure adequate inspection. It would seem to me we might want to wait several years before we looked at a cap, or at least one year, so that we can make sure that we're going to okay. adequately uh, protect people because this is a very lucrative industry, but it also carries great risks. And for my constituents, at least, since many of those trains will be going right through their communities, um, I think they would feel more, more as though the state is looking out for them if we knew that the administration could set rates and fees so that there could be robust enforcement. Um, yeah, so this this really was a very significant proposal in our original um, uh, budget um, to really put in place a statewide prevention and response program where we haven't had one before. And, and really in recognition that um, um, oil is coming into the state in different ways. Um, it used to be that it came in a lot through the marine terminals. Um, now that's that's shifting. And so this is really a proposal um, to treat all sources equally. Um, oil that's coming in through pipelines, through ports, through rail, um, domestic supply. Um, so uh, and and the, the proposal is for the first time a real statewide and coordinated uh, prevention and response program. Um, do we know that six and a half cent cap is going to provide um, uh, uh, all of the things we hope to be able to do? I think we don't know that right now. Um, this was our proposal in January. We think it is a very um, good and comprehensive proposal um, that will improve uh, safety and uh, statewide prevention activities significantly over what's being provided um, today and, and also treat all um, sources uh, of oil um, the same um, by putting the fee at the refinery level. Um, so uh, that was really the underpinning um, for our proposal. And so we do support the six and a half cents uh, per barrel cap at this time. Is there any reporting language in this so that we'll uh, be able to know how implementation is going and the affected no? Um, I don't think there's anything explicit, but we fully expect to be before the subcommittees next year um, talking about how this is going and, um, and, and what's been done to date. So I think there is a regular check-in um, that can be accommodated there. Okay. Thanks. Um, Assemblymember Bloom. 
Thank you. Um, I certainly agree with the sentiment that was expressed by Senator Hancock on this issue. And uh, uh, in the uh, budget sub three hearings, we felt that it was extremely important to give the uh, administrative uh, uh, to allow for the administrative ability to raise these fees or lower them to an appropriate level to make sure that uh, there's sufficient funding to do the job here. Um, this is not something that uh, uh, addresses a hypothetical issue. There have been uh, both marine and inland accidents um, uh, uh, across the country and in Canada. And we have had a robust program to address marine incidents, but uh, very little in the way of, of inland. Uh, so I would have preferred a different result here, but uh, this is an urgent matter that needs to be addressed. Uh, and and uh, so we'll, we'll go with this. And if there needs to be an adjustment rather than it be uh, being an administrative proceeding, it's going to be a more political uh, process and we'll just have to live with that. I'm afraid for now. This is a, Senator Nielsen, but first I was going to say that I was assuming that as a motion, Assembly Member Bloom. Great. It is indeed. Okay. Um, go ahead, uh, Senator Nielsen. Uh, uh, this issue of administrative uh, taxation or the ability of the agencies to raise fees, taxes, Unilaterally, the fire tax is only but the most recent. You know, it's a good argument that got this country started long ago called taxation without representation. If this legislature imposes a tax, the members of the legislature are representative of the people and accountable to the people. But people in administrative agencies are not accountable, mostly to anyone, not even the legislature. And that, to me, is taxation without representation, and giving them almost unlimited ability to raise fees or taxes. And fortunately, we've got Prop 26 challenges, and I hope we develop some case law. But, but it is an issue that the citizens should be concerned about. Agencies, faceless, nameless individuals imposing taxes on them and raising them with impunity. Madam Chair. Senator Hancock, then Assemblymember Bloom. Yeah. I just have to point out that fees and taxes are quite different, and fees with a nexus to protect people are quite different. And one might say that nameless, faceless, multinational corporations, uh, including ones that make m billions of dollars every year and who have so little respect for the human beings that work in their facilities that they put them at risk or so little respect for the communities through which they drive their trucks and their trains that they put them at risk are a much are a very very big and serious danger to the the people that live in California and I would remind you that I represent a district where the company's own engineers told it for 10 years that its pipes were corroded and unsafe, and something called the Business Impact Committee overrode those requests for pipe replacement until there was a catastrophic explosion at that refinery. And it isn't just that particular refinery, because there have been two explosions of sulfuric acid in another refinery this year um, that caused workers to have to be airlifted to hospitals. And um, therefore, government is something that really does protect us all when it makes sure that our people aren't subjected to that kind of danger to simply increase profit for some already very well off uh, corporate entities that may be people, but they don't get sent to prison or have any of the other things that happen to real people when they break the law. So um, I just hope that we do watch this and that we will make sure that we're funding this very important new program adequately, <coughs> and I'm glad the administration 
at least took on um, setting up a program this year. Senator Member Bloom. Um, uh, quickly on the issue of uh, nameless and faceless folks, um, uh, I, I don't quite agree that uh, uh, administrative agencies are, are nameless and faceless any more than um, the folks who are working on our budget with us here this, uh, uh, this, this evening. Um, but the important point here is that uh, uh, any administrative action would have had to come through our budget process and be approved by the nameless and faceless people who are sitting up here and in the legislature, meaning us. So uh, uh, it isn't quite the process that, uh, that was described earlier. That was proposed. The uh, motion is, uh, is for the uh, uh, compromise uh, reflected by Department of Finance's statement earlier. All right, we'll take the vote on that. So on the assembly side, that's a 3-1 on the Senate side. It's, I'm assuming, a 3-1 also. All right, we'll go to 